I got some hot social media insights on this episode of The Edward Show. I'm going to be talking about how the Instagram algorithm has changed. A lot of people are complaining. They're saying it's down. It's not coming back. They're modeling it off the TikTok algorithm too much, but the TikTok algorithm has changed as well. I'm getting way more views on TikTok now, just on average more views. I'm going to share what I'm learning about Snapchat, what I'm learning about Pinterest, what I'm learning about LinkedIn, new ways to reuse content that I've been doing, that I've been seeing and doing myself that has worked really well. That's what you're getting on this episode of the pod. So everyone's seeing the Instagram algorithm is down. Posts and reels, they are getting less reach. And you know, it looked that way to myself too, but here's actually what I've noticed. Instagram is slower to give out views, but it has a longer tail. As in, I've been noticing views coming in even longer than they have before. Whereas if an average video may have taken a couple hours to get 10,000 views, now it might take the whole day. And then the next day it'll get more views, but it'll just be slower than it's been. And this tail will be a lot longer. TikTok actually is giving more views. And the reason for that is because people are thinking that the Instagram algorithm is modeling TikTok, but actually TikTok, its algorithm is modeling Instagram from many months ago. TikTok is being very generous with views now. Very, very generous with views. I'm seeing great things on TikTok. If you're making videos, vertical videos are amazing because they can come out everywhere. And if one platform is down, another is up. But I think in general, the views are slower to come in just on both platforms on TikTok and Instagram. Views are slower to come in. But the positive thing is eventually over time, you get more views. I think that's super cool. Also, something else that I'm seeing, video performance is tested more rigorously across time zones and demographics. So what you see is these videos take longer to get views. Videos and posts on both platforms, they take longer to get views. That's because the algorithms are testing them more across different time zones, different people who might not be online at the same time. Someone might be online at this time and, and it's a perfect viewer for this video and they're not o- online now, but the, the next day they're going to be online or your ideal demographic is in this time zone, but you posted too early, but that's okay. It's just going to take longer to get views because it's going to be tested in that time zone, in that location. And I'm seeing that. I think that is actually the reason why videos are taking longer to get views. I think it's because they're being tested more rigorously. It's more deliberate to find who resonates with this content. There's a big opportunity that I've been playing with in TikTok. And this is only for people who have been making videos for over a year like I have. But so what TikTok does is if you had a above average performing video and you had it one year ago on the same day. So today is the 21st. If you had a well-performing video on August 21st, 2023, TikTok will tell you, you made this video a year ago. Do you want to reshare it? And then it puts on this text and it says, on this day, 8 21, 2023. And it just allows you to do that. It's really easy. And it's a thing on TikTok. But what you could do is you can do that. And if it's a, a well performing video a year ago, it will actually perform well. But if it's irrelevant, because I did this myself recently, the video might be irrelevant, but you can still share it with context, either just writing on some text onto the video or in the description. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, you remember I found this thing called the Twitter X ads glitch, where I was getting millions of impressions and thousands of link link clicks for a dollar a day ad spend. It was crazy. I found an affiliate product. It was a SaaS affiliate product that was giving $3 for free sign up. So someone just had to sign up with their email and then they paid me $3. And I was sending these thousands of link clicks that I was getting to this affiliate product. And I don't know how many of them were converting on the affiliate product, but I was getting a lot of money. And that was great. I was also getting email signups for my newsletter and traffic to my website and listeners to this podcast and so much stuff. And it was for a dollar a day ad spend on Twitter X ads. And so I made a video about that. That video went viral. And then TikTok reminded me, I think this was yesterday, the day before, that it was a year that I made that video. Do you want to post it again? And so I posted it again on this day, August 20th, 2023. And then I put a caption like this no longer works, but what a time to be alive. It was incredible. Or it was like a year ago when I discovered this. And and still the video is doing very well because the caption makes it relevant again, even though the trick no longer works. 
And I can post one or two of these recap videos, one of these like this happened a year ago type videos, one or two of these videos a week. I post them all the time. And if they performed well before, people will still like them with the right context, even if the tricks or the contents of the video are irrelevant. I think that's super cool. I'm excited about all the different ways that content can be used. I'm always paying attention to YouTube shorts, but I don't think the YouTube shorts algorithm has changed like at all. I have seen so few changes with the YouTube shorts algorithm over the last couple of months. However, as I've talked about before, YouTube shorts is amazing for doing SEO because a lot of people, they want to learn something fast and in an engaging way. YouTube shorts under a minute, more likely to be engaging than reading an article, more likely to be engaging than watching a long video. And people love learning and getting their answers from YouTube Shorts. And YouTube Shorts is great to put in keywords. You put your keyword at the beginning of the title in YouTube Shorts, and you put your keyword at the beginning of the description in YouTube Shorts. All right, I've talked about LinkedIn a bit before and about how I was so hyped about LinkedIn and how a lot of other people are hyped about LinkedIn video because LinkedIn is rolling out video now and it's supposed to get crazy views. So here's what I've seen from LinkedIn, just using it every day, putting it up by videos. It's better than it was before, as in it's better than it was several months ago, but it's not crazy. It's not crazy by any means. Instagram way crazier, TikTok way crazier, YouTube shorts way crazier, Snapchat way crazier, which I'll talk about in a minute. LinkedIn occasionally has videos that go really viral, which is super cool, but I, it's not, I wouldn't say it's crazy by any means, but it's great to have your videos come out there nonetheless, because I can automate this. I use reusevideo.com, it just automates this. I've talked about this nonstop. And it just makes it so my videos come out everywhere at once. With some platforms, it's better to upload manually. Instagram, it's better to upload manually. But aside from Instagram, I think they all come out automatically on every other platform. There is a bit of an opportunity though with LinkedIn video. And this is what it is. So imagine you have like a killer in your space who's not well known. So it could be MySpace, SEO. It could be a top SEO person. Maybe it's a head of SEO at a big agency, for example and you read about them in ad age or something like that, or you hear a story about them, a, a positive story, what you do is you make a video. You make a short form video about this person. If you know how to make videos, then you can make it engaging and it's positive. And then you put it up on LinkedIn, you write a nice description, you tag the person. And the thing is, there are so many killers out there who want attention. They're trying to go on podcasts to get attention, to get well-known, to be able to share why they're important with their communities, with the people that follow them. And they want this attention, but they don't know how to get it. And it's even more meaningful when somebody makes a video about them because that's social proof. So what you do is you make a video about someone who is a killer in your space. It's a positive video, comes out, and then they're a lot more likely to share it with their community. So one, that's extra viewers for you. But two, if you ever wanted an excuse to speak with someone who maybe typically it would be hard for you to speak with, just make a nice video about them. They'll be so flattered. And then you can be like, hey, I learned so much about you while I was making this video. I'd love to talk to you. You're super cool. <laughs> Very humble. And if you made a nice video about them, there's a good chance that they're going to say yes. And even if they don't say yes, there's still a very good chance that they're going to share the video with their community, assuming they're not already like famous where this is no big deal. Or if the video is like really bad, if it's like an embarrassing video, they probably won't share it. But if it's decent enough, then there's a good chance that they share it. And there's also a good chance that you can talk to them because of that. You have a better chance of talking to them. So I think that's an opportunity too. If you're doing cold outreach or you want to try to find mentors, I think that is something cool that you can do with LinkedIn video. And LinkedIn video makes it very easy to tag people. And again, thought leadership is huge on LinkedIn. This is a way for people to make themselves seem like more of a thought leader. I'm still growing on Snapchat. All my videos come out to Snapchat. Snapchat is amazing. I wish I had set up my Snapchat automation sooner. Here's the thing about Snapchat. Snapchat is more popular with younger audiences. Most of its users are in the age of 13 to 34. A significant portion is teenagers and young adults. And the gender distribution is just down the middle. But like, again, a significant portion of the viewers on Snapchat are teenagers and young adults, whereas I see many adults and business leaders on Instagram, especially Instagram and TikTok, I don't see that really on Snapchat. However, 
if you are playing the long game and you're like, I'm going to do this for the next 10 years, I'm going to be a leader in my space for the next 10 years, Snapchat is a great place to be because you are hitting people as they are learning, they are finding their hobbies, and you are making good content that you are passionate about. People can engage with that and become fans of yours, and you can get dedicated fans just from the start or dedicated followers just from the start with Snapchat. I think Snapchat is very cool because of that. And I've been learning about Pinterest. So here's what I'm learning. First of all, Pinterest is a grind. If you want to do Pinterest properly, it takes a lot of effing work. So you want to hire a manager for Pinterest. That's the number one thing. Number two, if you are talking, if you're a yapper like I am, I talk and I talk and I talk and I talk. If you are talking, longer videos on Pinterest, they're not going to do as well. Under 10 second videos will do better. But even then, Pinterest is really ideal for images. So what you could do, and you could have someone who does this for you, is somebody makes vertical images. These are vertical pins. And then there's your faces on each image because your face is the brand. I say this to everyone who's making videos. Your face is the brand. Your face is the brand. Your face is the brand. My face is the brand. And then you have your quote. And there's a crazy opportunity where you could take viral threads from X or from the Threads app viral threads in your niche or viral articles or newsletters in your niche and take that, put your face, cite your source, and then put really good quotes over engaging looking images, not like infographics, but just cool looking images and your face because your face is a brand. I think there's an opportunity for that. That's what I'm learning. I'm still learning about Pinterest and Pinterest is a channel that I want to take seriously in the future. And there's a good chance that that's how I will try it. The last thing is Facebook Reels. I have not put much thought into Facebook Reels, but I really want to conquer Facebook Reels. I think there is such a high ROI for having a Facebook page and Facebook Reels if done properly. And so I want to get a lot better at Facebook Reels. But most of these other channels, I'm feeling so positive about them. And so, you know, everyone's saying Instagram viewers are down. This is terrible. Adam Mosseri, please fix this. CEO of Instagram, please fix this. But I don't know. I think things are looking pretty good. It just takes a bit more time. You know what uh, What I said to my friend? I read Atomic Habits, I think, two years ago. I'm doing the Atomic Habits method with content because I post at least once a day. I've made it a habit. I'm trying to get a little bit better every day. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job of it. I'm sharing this because a lot of my friends are inspired by me or just people who watch my stuff. They're like, if Edwards can do it, I can do it. And that's the vibe that I want to have because I'm just a really a normal guy. If I can do it, you can do it. And a lot of people are trying it now. And I, I shared this theory about Atomic Habits with my friends. I'm doing the Atomic Habits Method. Atomic Habits is a great book, by the way, but that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the Atomic Habits Method with my videos and with my content. I'm just very committed, putting this stuff out. Even if I'm not feeling it, I'm still going to get out a video. I'm still going to do it. And uh, I feel great as a result. I'm really proud of the streak that I have in terms of putting out content. But also just like, I can't believe what I've done by just being consistent. Anyway, I thought these were some pretty cool insights. I hope you think these are some cool insights too. This is episode 412. Is it wow, 412? I've done so many podcasts now that I'm starting to lose track. I'm checking now. It is episode, oh my God, it's episode 413 of The Edward Show. 413 days in a row that I have done this podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you're watching, I'm recording this one in one of my favorite hotels. One of my favorite hotel lobbies is a really nice place. I love it here. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.